And when we give very high doses of fructose, we could raise the uric acid, they develop hypertension, and when we lowered the uric acid, their blood pressure fell, their triglycerides fell, their insulin resistance improved, and if we gave it prophylactically, we could prevent weight gain. Not only that, we now have a clinical trial in people that is confirming the weight gain effects of allopurinol, or the weight loss, negative weight gain. So when I was doing this, and we were thinking it was through endothelial function, we had a lipid biochemist in our group who said, no, you know, everything is the fat cells really important. It's been shown that diabetes is a disease of the fat cell. So we put uric acid on fat cells, and we also put fructose on fat cells, and it inhibited uh, an enzyme or, or hormones that are involved in insulin sensitivity. It caused oxidative stress. It caused inflammation. And most recently, Friedman, who discovered leptin, has shown that if you cannot make uric acid, if you take a mouse where you knock out the gene that makes uric acid, the mice fail to get fat. And now we have polymorphisms linked with the transporters for uric acid in fat cells predicting obesity. Not only that, but uric acid is a very strong predictor of diabetes. And these are, are, are a series of studies that we've, uh, we and others have published. So could fructose be the driving force of the epidemic? Fructose-rich diets raise blood pressure, triglycerides, induce insulin resistance and weight gain. In other words, it causes this pre-diabetes syndrome. Humans are taking this diet without IRB approval. Metabolic syndrome has a major role in driving hypertension and kidney disease. And these are some of the effects. I don't have a lot of time to go through it, so I'm just going to point out that we, our group and others have shown that fructose causes leptin resistance in rats where they keep eating. It's acutely a neurostimulant, it works through dopamine, but later it causes dementia and strokes by causing vascular disease to the brain. Uh, it causes fatty liver, we can do that in animals. High fructose corn syrup actually induces fatty liver more than sucrose for the same caloric intake. It raises, causes inflammation. Uh, it's associated with a lot of renal effects. It accelerates kidney disease in animals. It induces oxidative stress, and it probably has a role in preeclampsia. So could fructose be the driving force? We've also just finished a study in Menorca where we gave fructose for two weeks to healthy people, and look what happened. The blood pressure went up. The triglycerides went up. The HDL cholesterol fell. Insulin resistance went up. Uric acid went up. And even a test of fatty liver went up. And not only that, they spontaneously quit exercising by 50%. And it makes sense because fructose causes energy depletion. Uric acid's been going up the last 100 years. So why did we have this? Why did we get this mutation? Well, in the early Miocene, it was the emergence of the first ape. And the, during the early Miocene, there was a plethora of species. There was over 100 apes in Africa. Today, there's only five apes, okay, but back then, there were over 100 species. And then there was started to be global cooling. And around 17 million years ago, the Tethysi water level fell, and a land bridge occurred that allowed the primates, giraffes, and rhinos to get into Europe. Shortly thereafter, the global cooling became worse. The winters developed. There was a massive extinction called the mid-Miocene extinction. Over 30% of all mammals became extinct, and almost all primates became extinct. At the same time, a huge flaming asteroid hit Europe with an impact of 3 million Hiroshima bombs. And it correlates exactly when the uricase mutation occurred. And what we now know is that fruit and game that raise uric acid has these effects on blood pressure and fat stores and insulin resistance and leptin resistance that help put on weight. And that's important towards the end of the summer so you can survive the winter months. But with global cooling, this increased. And a mutation that could increase the effects was probably a pro-survival effect that helped uh, early primates live. Basically, a super ape developed. And anthropologic evidence suggests that that ape occurred in the area where the, where the cooling occurred in Europe and that the apes then migrated out, the super ape. And it's completely consistent with the uricase mutation, and I'm working with Peter Andrews uh, from the Natural History Museum in London on this. So we think this mutation was a survival effect, 
But in today's society where there's high purine, high salt, and high fructose diets, we are unfortunately trapped uh, by our own genes. If this is the case, then the other great primates, the other apes that have uricase inhibition, the question is, you know, what's their uric acid? And they're not eating very high diets of sugar. They're not eating sugar and high fructose corn syrup. They're eating some fruit, but remember vitamin C neutralizes uric acid's effects. And in the apes that have uricase, their uric acids are low. But in ours, now the mean is six and a half and five that keep going up. So we thought to ourselves, do primitive people have low uric acid? So I was able to, to test the Yanomami Indians in southern Venezuela who have normal blood pressure. They have a very high sympathetic nervous system because they try to kill each other all the time. But, but they have low blood pressure and low cardiovascular disease. And when we measured their uric acid, it was the same as a, uh, basically a gorilla. So I'm going to end here by saying that I believe that this epidemic is driven by fructose, Purine rich foods, lead, I didn't go into that. That this affects nitric oxide, increases blood pressure, but once you get the microvascular disease in the kidney, it's driven by the kidney. Once you get severe kidney disease, that drives it. And once you become obese, obesity itself will drive insulin resistance. We're in an epidemic with four major horses, the chariots of hypertension, diabetes, the lumbering horse of obesity, the anemic course of kidney disease. These are the epidemics. They're, it's driven together. They're driven by the same process. They're driving heart disease with the old man gout at the chariot and with little sirens dripping sugar and uh, high fructose corn syrup uh, onto the heart. Thank you very much.